What is going on, you beautiful people? Uh, DJ's here with another Advanced Fools by Web replay analysis. Today, we're going to be examining a good old-fashioned throwback. Banger. And by that, we're going to be examining a game between two current prominent top-level players, Jay Tarquin and Lord Clefairy. We're going to be examining a game they had back in circa January 2023, so about a year and a half ago, before they reached the current levels. Back when they were roughly around 1300, 1350 level players. And we're going to learn from their mistakes. They currently are playing a lot much better at a higher level than they do in this game. But uh, you can actually see the lessons learned as they play. And it's also a crazy game too. So we're going to learn a lot from this game. We're going to be heavily entertained. This is a phenomenal game. I had to go deep in the Deej archives to find this game. So I hope you all can appreciate that. It was not easy finding this game back a year and a half ago. Anyway, let's talk about the map right here first. So this map right here, I actually have not had the luck of playing on this map. It's, it looks like an incredibly fun map. It's called Fort Fantasy. And it's a three base map with an airport in the back, but it's only accessible by building a black boat or a lander to bring an infantry back over here. It is a very low income map as well. If you do not go to the back over here, I've seen games where you do not go to the back. There's no airports in play at all. It's all a land game. Uh, because it's also kind of base rushy. It's, it's got everything. This map, contested calm towers, base rushy aspects. Here's the one base down here. And you can actually, well, it's a two base actually. Two bases shift over here for black, can overwhelm this one base. Uh, likewise, over here, the two green can overwhelm the, the back in the middle over here. And you can also have a conventional center fight. This map can take a whole bunch of different angles. If you don't go for the corner properties, it's 17k each side, so extremely low income. If you go for the back properties as well, all things equal, each side will have 19k, which is also a very low income map. Low income maps, as you guys might have picked up on in past videos of mine, benefit max players, day-to-day -day players, max, Kindle, Lash, Von Bolt, uh, the usual suspects. Whereas larger, you know, high in income maps are like the more ego, Olaf, Hawk, kind of stally COs. Uh, CEOs that do a lot of global damage. So Drake is an interesting pick on this map. I mean, it sort of makes sense because the airport is not always in play. And when airports don't really matter that much, Drake thrives. You also have two black boats with increased defense. They're kind of like blockers. This black boat can block black from going to the middle over here. It's going to easily get that property right there. The black boat can block around. Maybe can survive an extra shot since it's a, a, a Drake black boat. Um, but... Drake's a pretty interesting pick here. I personally think Kindle is the pick for this map because it is low income, base rushy esque. Also, this HQ slash lab is somewhat vulnerable as well. It is next to the two base, but if you look carefully, the two base is actually not really as easy to reinforce as you think. There's a forest right here. There's mountains surrounding this other base. It's easily you can put a unit here as green and block Black's unit inside of there, and it's very frustrating to deal with. And you won't really have air units to really help out and push these units around. This is also kind of a very indirect map. Look at all these choke points. You can put an indirect here and base lock that. Uh, artillery here, 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 base lock it without air units. It's hard to really deal with those base locks as well. So indirect kind of heavy, land heavy sort of map. It is very interesting map. I really wish I had a map, uh, a game on this map. Maybe it'll be in the next rotation and I'll play on it. But I'm envious of those who have played on this map because I've seen like four or five games on this map. All of them were close, all of them were entertaining, but this one takes the cake. So let's talk about the players currently. Jay Talkwin currently is about a 1650 level player. He's like top 10 overall in all of Advanced Wars. Lord Kaferi, top three overall. He's a 1720 level player. So each of these players have gained 300 to 400 points from when this game was played. And even when they played this game, they're still top 50 level players. Um, adjusting for rating inflation, maybe they're top 25 level players at the time back in 2023. It's more impressive to be 1400 in 2023 than it is to be now when everyone and their mother and their cat is 1400. Um, but really phenomenal players and a lot of, they make a lot of mistakes on this game. I, you know, it's kind of funny to watch them make all these mistakes and meme stuff when in the future they play at such a high level consistently. So we can finally enjoy other people's mistakes even when they're better than us currently. So this is my one excuse. Lord Clefairy is better than me. Jay Talkman's probably better than me in most game modes. I can actually be like, hey, hey you messed up because this is the past game. If I do that now, it's, I'm hypocritical because I'm worse. But I can do it for the past game, so that's maybe why I chose this game. Anyway, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get started. So in the top, as the Green Earths, the Drake Boys, we have Jay Talkman. In the bottom, we have Lord Clefairy and the Black Hole, the Kindles, the aggressive Kindles. 
So, so far, pretty standard stuff. You gotta go for the center presence. You, you wanna get that comp tower. Like I said, it's a little contested. Uh, you wanna get that early and hold on to it. It's hard to flip, but it's also very easy to deny. So you wanna get it uh, early. And I'm also curious if either of them are gonna go for the airport. Because the airport, you're gonna have to invest 7.5k to get a black boat. And then you're gonna have to get like three, four more turns to even get air units. So, and when you do get air units, you're not gonna have that much money, so you're only really gonna be building battle copters. So it's a huge investment. Since it's base rushy, investing that 7.5k, you're probably gonna lose corner properties. Like, say, Jay Taco invests in a black boat, you're probably gonna lose these corner properties, which are probably gonna fall under black anyway. Uh, or these corner properties, you're, there's there's a payoff. When you invest in something, you're gonna lose something elsewhere. That's an important thing to realize in advance wars and in a lot of things in life. Wherever you water your plants or whatever the hell, maybe another plant dies elsewhere. That's not even a good analogy, but that's what I'm gonna roll with. So, it's a huge investment. We have a tank over here on the two base side, already denying this property that Jaytaquin was, he really wanted it. So he's gonna go for this corner property and this one most likely. So that's a nice tank build right there. First tank of the match. Will Jaytaquin match with a tank over here on his one base side? Or will he instead choose to do a tank on his strong side? Looks like he's gonna match. Perfectly normal, acceptable thing to do. And a lot of times when you have the first tank, you also are not gonna be able to afford the second tank the next turn. In Advanced Wars, you don't wanna have a first turn advantage. So you wanna have an A, B, B, A sort of format where the first tank is A player. B has the second tank and the third tank, then the first player has the fourth tank. You don't want to have like the first player is the first tank and the third tank and the fifth tank. You want to have it A B B A or B A A B. The first player who has a tank should not have a follow up tank. Is basically what I'm saying. So Jutakun will have the next tank. He can either chain his tank on his weak side or get a tank on his strong side, which is probably what I would expect him to do. Spread the tanks evenly. So he will have the second and the third tank. So what's he going to do with that third tank? Where is he going to build it? He builds the chain, so he instead of instead of going for the tank on the strong side over here, he has to chain on this weak side. Um, I understand. I, I personally would probably build a tank on the weak, the strong side over here because you would deny this property. You still can deny it with his infantry, but it's a Kindle infantry, and if you attack on a Kindle infantry on a city, you're not going to win that fight. I, I would have loved to see a tank on his strong side, but it didn't really matter. Actually, it didn't really matter that much. The tank's just gonna sit there and you can't really dislodge it. And also, when you're playing as Drake or a more stally CO, I like evening out the entire map. I don't like rushing in one area. I like evening it out. If I'm playing Olaf, if I'm playing Hawk, I wanna have my, all my bases covered. I don't wanna really be death balling too much usually. Uh, but whereas if you're Kindle, yeah, pump out those tanks. Pump max tanks. You need to overrun your opponent because you're on a timer versus those global damage COs. But Instead, we're seeing uh, some interesting plays. Like I said, these guys, this is like a long, long time ago. And I'm interested to see when the first artillery is. We'll use artillery to kill this black boat. We'll use an artillery to lock the base. That's my choice. Uh, I wanna see some artillery on this map. It is extremely choky. You can, hell, you can kill off this tank. You can put artillery here. It doesn't even have to be blocking a base. You attack here, put artillery like say here or here, and you, you control all this. You can go for an HQ rush. A lot of things are possible. So we have the first action of the match, day seven. Oof. First tank attack comes in. Allowing a first strike, but it is on the weak side, and Black will be able to reinforce doubly with two tanks over here. So that's kind of why I advocated for getting a tank over here on the weak side, or on the strong side for uh, green, because you're going to be able to pump out twice as many tanks over here as you are over here. And without the airport, you're not going to really be able to reinforce it with... Uh, copters because typically when you have a one base versus two base you at least have an airport to help compensate for the lack of units you have however in this instance don't really have that and then there's a pesky black boat blocking the spot here so the tank has to go in the forest very frustrating goes for the hit over there i'm assuming the infantry is going to sit on that city allowing hit okay okay he's going to block with the tank i was about to say he's going to allow a hit on the city but he's blocking he's cool he's sweet He's Jay Taquin. That's his new theme song. First tank in the center, though, so green is banking on a center attack, where it seems like black is aiming for a corner attack. I sort of align more with the corner attack. There's more properties in the corner that are flippable than in the center. Realistically, these, these cities are like, you're not going to flip them. The thing you can flip is the comm towers, and even that's pretty difficult. Uh, so at most, you're probably going to flip that comm tower over here as green. And it's difficult too, because you're facing a Kindle, so Urban Blight's gonna make that twice as hard to flip. 
First artillery though, I like it. I like it on the uh, side over here. Not bad. I kind of, I like the artillery better over here. But, it's, he needs the tank chain. He needs the tank chain. Maybe I would have built it over here. I don't know. We'll see how that artillery does. And here comes the tanks. Ba blank. Ba blank. Yeah, you're not going to win this long term. I was also very interested here. This infantry stopped its cap to hit that tank over there. Uh, I was a little curious by that. If that tank could reach and he could kill it off and this could reach the city, that would make a lot more sense. But why did he stop capping there? And why didn't he just attack from this fort? I guess he didn't want to get the first strike. It's okay. I, I understand. I don't know if it's worth stopping that cap, though. I don't know if it's worth stopping that cap. Personally. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm stupid. But that, that seems a little funny, especially on a map where income is so low and matters that much more. Hell, if you each have 24 properties, by all means, delay. But that's a little, you know, it's important at this point of the game. That's all I'll say. And I think Green was going to fall back anyway. Like, there's three tanks over here. I think he was going to fall back anyway. Oh, oh hey, Jay Taquin. Growing pains, growing pains. Fighting two base, and uh, one base into two base. There's only going to be one decent tank counterattack, and because he built an artillery here rather than here, the reinforce is not as good. So, interesting choice to build an artillery there than over here. I would have built the tank over here because you're having fighting, and the artillery in the center. But these are growing pains. The little boys. Little bouncing baby boys. And we see it, folks. We see not only a base skip, but the first black boat. Jay Taquin, the Drake player, is going for the airport. The Drake player going for the airport first? Okay. I mean, he has a slight income advantage. Maybe he's banking on that, but he also had the base skip. He's going to lose a lot of pressure from that. He, he has a tank where he needs it. Will this gamble work for him, though? He's going to lose those tanks, though. He's going to get yanked by those tanks. And then... Uh, yeah. I don't know. He only lost one tank here. And the Black Boat has a little cheeky repair. That's kind of cute. So we'll see how that works out for him. And now the tanks are going to the middle. I don't like this tank, though. You only need one tank to beat off that tank over there. It's not going to attack into you. Um, there, I like this. And this is interesting. I, I don't mind that. That's fine. I'm starting, weak side artillery on this map are not as bad as they usually are. That's what I'll say. I think they're doable. Um, it can st encourage a standstill over here on green side, uh, strong side. So the black boat goes to the center. The black, the black boat goes to the center over there into the center of the island. It's going to go for the airport first, no doubt. He wants to get that 19k rather than the 17k, and we're seeing the second artillery. So the artillery proliferation has begun. And the, and the line of tanks over here has begun. So, and um, Black has one infantry, two infantry over here. It's going to take at least four turns to capture that property in this property. Imagine capping that property and then capping that property after. He would have 17k right now. That's a huge difference. I don't think that little extra tank shot from a different square mattered so much that you're losing god, I don't know, maybe 6 to 8k in income overall from that. That's a whole extra tank we're talking about. I'm just spitballing the numbers, but that's a lot of turns of lost income. And he doesn't even attack into it. So that was all like for moot. It was a moot point. So let's see what Green does over here. He can't really push, which is fine. He's, he's J talk when he's Drake. Be happy with stalemates as Drake. The longer the game goes on, the more forces are built up, you're happy. You have the better powers. You have the nice tsunami. It makes it rain, does a lot of damage. The more units on the board, the more unit value on the board, the more damage you do. So be happy. Be happy. Yeah, get those artillery, proliferate them up, encourage a stalemate. You don't want the stalemate to break. The, the stalemate will break when you use your superpower. That's, that's the Drake's MO right there. So you should be happy with all these uh, artillery. And there's no black boat for black. He doesn't have the income for it. Doesn't have the income. I'm telling you, that infantry cap right there. Betty bad. And we have a rocket. A rocket on the weak side. Okay. Is he going to try to lock that base? Is that what the idea is here? I'm curious what that rocket's idea is here. One thing to be wary of, though. Kindle does have a power spike early with the Urban Blight. He could possibly knock that down to 7. And then... I don't think he can break through this next turn. He can't. You can't one-hit KO a 7 HP tank without two angles. You're going to attack with a tank and then an infantry maybe you can kill. 
but otherwise you can't. Oh no. No, he should have kept the line. Hold the line. Uh oh. Now that will die. Then you need to retreat that tank. You need to retreat that tank. Okay, good. Wait. Oh, it attacked the pipe seam. What? Does this benefit you at all? I don't think so. I don't think there's any point in attacking that pipe seam. You're just on bad terrain. Go in like the city or forest? Something. Uh, not that forest. Not that forest. Don't go in that forest. Okay. Okay, now it's starting to get scary over here. So, look at all these. Oh my god. This is Kindle MO. So, look at Flary. He's, he's making some good decisions now. He's Kindle. You don't want to stalemate. You need to overwhelm on one side. You don't want to be even across the map like Drake is. You're not going to break through this. You're not going to break through this. This is the weak part over here. This is the one base. As Kindle, you need to realize that. If you don't realize that, you're never going to win an Advanced Wars game. You need to overwhelm your opponent and get a decisive advantage if you're Kindle, if you're Max. Uh, Bumble, even to some degree. So, what is J Talkman going to do here? If I were him, you need to start shifting tanks down here. Bring this tank down here to that road. Put this rocket in the forest. Interrupt the cap with the infantry. And, like, put this on the city, maybe? You need to find something or other, man. You need, you need to, it, it's not looking great, but you're going to have more income than your opponent. You made the black boat investment because of that. You have one less tank. You could have had a tank extra tank over here and had four tanks rather than three uh, versus four other tanks. But instead you're facing three tanks versus four tanks and two artillery and you have one rocket. So what will you talk about do? Do not agree with that move. Interrupt with the infantry. You need to move this downward for number one reason why. You're going to be on there and then Urban Blight's going to hit. You're going to go down to 7 HP. Number two, you're base locking yourself. You need to build a tank down here ASAP. You have three tanks versus four tanks. You need to be pumping out tanks. Move this down one square. Block it with a tank on the city, tank on the road next to it, or what have you. You could, you have enough units to block. He doesn't have enough. He only has two tanks in range to attack. He doesn't have this other one in range. We can attack the city over there, but put that on the forest. Attack with the infantry to interrupt the cap have everything else defend you have three tanks to block you'll be okay i don't agree with that move and then he attacks with the infantry anyway it's gonna die if he was the only way you would reason you would ever do that attack with the rockets is to preserve your infantry if he's gonna murder it anyway what is the point of even attacking with the rock see this is jake talk when 1300 level player and that's not even a 1300 level move that's like a 900 level move very strange i would expect better of him but Growing pains. I'll just keep saying that over the entirety of the game. Growing pains. Growing pains. Do something bad. Growing pains. Just like an easy thing for me to say. Growing pains. Bad move. Growing pains. So. This is going to hurt. Free property. Free infantry, basically. Now what do you do? You're going to base lock yourself and attack again? Come on, man. Uh-oh. The wall breaking. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. A little scary over here. Okay. More infantry. I mean, a couple are going to die, so that's okay, but. Now, some of you might know this, but Jtaquin is obsessed with stealth fighters. They're a bad unit. There's no way around it. Stealths are a bad unit. They're very niche. The only time I would ever consider building them if I have a high income and my opponent does not have a high income, and I can spam them out and my opponent cannot spam fighters. Usually I do this for Drake. Um, I'm not Drake first Drake versus Grit. Like if I have 24 income and they have 17k, I'll spam out a stealth fighter every turn because they can't keep up with the fighters. That makes sense. When you're Drake, your air units have 20% minus attack. With the comp tower, 90% attack. You're building stealth fighter. It doesn't make sense. You're Luckily for him, he doesn't have to base skip, but he's going to have these three tanks still. Maybe this third, fourth one's going to shift. Whereas a shit ton of five tanks over here, two artillery. And that rockets is going to be vulnerable very soon, trust me. That is a huge gamble that I do not think is worth it. A weakened stealth on a low income map as Drake. It's memey. It's funny. But <laughs> it's bad. He's gonna learn a lesson. He's gonna learn a lesson. Stealthies suck. Um, it rhymes with hawk. 
I'll say that. I'll say that. And the Rocket stays on the base. He's base locking himself. Not a turn I like for Jay Taquin. Not a turn I like. And he's keeping this Black Boat hostage. I don't think it even cares, but it's interesting. And now there's going to be an Urban Blight. So that's going to go down to seven. Interesting. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Someone's going to get the ouchie. Is that going to one-shot? Tank follow up there. Kill it. Oh, this is going to be really bad. Oh, this is going to be really bad, isn't it? Oh, and one other thing. You built the stealth on the Urban Blight turn. So, you're going to also be taking, what? It's 24, uh, 24k? Uh, 3,600 in repairs. Damn. Here comes the ouchie. Here comes the ouchie. But gong! Bong 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 bong. So on one hand, it's like one of the it's fork in the roads. There's like a nice little castle on one side, and there's like hell on earth on the other side. Little castle is like build a tank, move your rockets, consolidate the position. On the right side is build a stealth and die in eternal hell. J Talkman shows that second option. He's in perpetual stealth hell now. So let's see what the stealth can do. All right, stealthy. Nine HP stealthy, can't even hide in the same turn. Wow, a whopping five damage. Woo wee, look at that. Built an anti-air, and because of the stealth, looks black. The one good thing about the stealth fighter, black does not have an airport, so he has no way to deal with it right now. But a weakened nine HP stealth, like I'm not in not much of a rush to even capture the airport. Like you can just ignore it. And what a good thing about the stealth on this map, though, is you can heal it with a black boat. You can repair it with a black boat, and it'll give it fuel, and it will heal it. So having these extra black boats is actually good for the stealth. So I will say that for that reason, it's pretty half decent. But this is just terrible. But luckily for Jay Talkman, before he was just going to outright lose. This is just losing. A typhoon happens at the very last second. He needed that so bad. If there's no typhoon this turn, Jay Talkman loses. Game over. Uh-uh. So, got a little lucky there, huh? Got a little lucky there, huh? And build the copter. Schlopter copter. Drake copter. Okay. So, bogged down by all the stuff. Black is only able to do this and combine a bunch of units. But now, should talk about getting a nice little hit in there. And he needs to hide that stealth, though. That's the thing. The stealth needs to be hidden. Because it can be hit by the anti-air until it's hidden. Stealth goes over there, hides. So now it's invincible. It is essentially invincible. Not really winning over here though, just kind of stalemated over here. So he didn't really have any gains over here, and he's lost his property. Um, but he has these two corner properties, so he's actually ahead in income because of it. Temporarily, it's not going to last for very long. But Jay Taquin, he's, you know, that he really needed that Typhoon. That Typhoon literally saved him. But can he survive in the long term? Baglonga, Bagrongla, Batongla. So the thing is, Black is extremely overextended over here. Um, maybe if I were Black, I would capture this property and hold back. I do not think you can capture this property, and you're way too close to the base. I don't know if there's enough firepower to keep consistently doing that with a stealth attacking every turn and tank coming out of there every turn. It's a difficult... Uh way to do this so we'll see if he can sustain it um and he's back from his vacation this infantry that's a one shot that's a one shot oh and there you have it oh uh, no no he can't he wasn't gonna attack the stealth on that i guess it didn't do very much damage to the anti-air probably knock it down like three you know three hp anti-air is probably gonna do like five damage to that copter so i guess it makes sense but the good news is stealth it is blocking attacking that copter so Jay Chalkwin's actually attacking in the middle. His counterattack is in the middle, not on the side over here. It's in the middle, which, like I said at the beginning, most of the guts and the glory, you're going to win all the properties on the sides. Middle, only thing you can really flip is this proper, this, this comm tower. You're not going to, that's like what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Two turns reinforced over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
It's two turns reinforced over here, three turns reinforced blue. It's also two turns reinforced over here. Two bases, two turns reinforced. You're not gonna be able to get that. But luckily for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But it's a black boat, so it's gonna take three turns to reinforce this, whereas it takes two turns to reinforce that. So I don't think it's plausible to actually think you're gonna get that property. But maybe Jay Talkwood thinks he can. I don't think so. Boom, 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 boom. And now, it's this slop. They need to fall back. I don't like this. Now Green's going to feast a little bit more. So Jitakwa's actually going to be doing quite fine over here. I thought he was dead, but not anymore. Not anymore. Counterattack in the middle. Jitakwa's coming back, believe it or not. He's low on the, in, uh, on the unit count. He's teching up, though. He's got a medium tank now, and he's got a stealth fighter. So Jitakwa is a fan of the tech up, which, you know, makes sense. He's lower on tanks than black. This, I think that makes sense. There's a lot of tanks in the middle. You gotta fall back though, there's two tanks here, you have artillery and a shit ton of infantry, you're just about to lose all this infantry. So I, I really dislike this center attack. You're not gonna get any properties out of this. You're not gonna get any properties, you're just gonna lose a lot of infantry. It's it's not sustainable. The stealth fighter though, it's gonna be low on uh, fuel soon, it's got 22 fuel. I believe every turn it loses 8 when it's hidden and 5 when it's not, so it should go down to 14. 14 fuel. So it can move 5? And then it'll have one fuel at the end of the turn. It needs to top off. So I think the Stealth Rider has to retreat this turn. That's another... It's high maintenance. It's like a high maintenance girlfriend. It also can't control that stealth. Like, Just so annoying. Oh, he's still fighting into this. He's got no tanks. He got no, oh, he's got a copter. He's got a Schlopter copter. Way out of position anti-air. can go over there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So that Schlopter copter can actually do a little bit of work, which is not bad. But it's allowing that tank to just go on there and murder that infantry in one hit. Heals up the uh, stealth over there, so now it's got topped off. Stops the cap over there, like I said. Usually I, I value, you know, units over unit uh, income, but this is such a low income map, I kind of like the interrupt right over here. Especially if you're going to have a tsunami or a typhoon coming soon. I think it's actually sustainable to stop that property. Um, it's going to be hard to flip that later as a green, because you're pumping out vehicles, pumping out vehicles. All your infantry is over here. So once you give that up to black, you're not really going to get that back for a long, long time. Um, so keep that in mind. When you're pumping out vehicles on the side, pumping out vehicles on your side, where are all the infantry? You're not going to have them. That's why two base beats one base. Because you can match vehicles, but then there's an infantry flood as well. And how do you deal with that? How do you deal with the infantry as well? But it's already day 18. Things are getting a little wonker. I really don't like allowing that tank free one hit KO. Boonga. Shifting to the middle now. So now it's interesting. Black is shifting to the middle. Green needs to pull back. I I can't stress this enough. Oh, and now Black has a pretty decent army over here. Okay. Like, we're trying to pluck that property and pluck that property. Pluckity pluck. Pluckity pluck. Boom, bye-bye. Stealth comes in. Um, okay, I'm assuming that medium tank attacked that pipe seam, which is incredibly dumb. But it's doable. I, don't, I really don't like attacking pipe seam for the hell of it. There needs to be a tactical idea behind it. Now we're really trying to stop this, uh, but I have news for Jay Talkman. Uh, there's an Urban Blight, so all of this doesn't matter. He gets an extra turn to interrupt that. Don't put anything on a property. Okay, he built a rocket um, over here. We saw how well the rocket did over there. I don't think he learned his lesson. We'll see how well this rocket does. I mean, it's, look at it. Large zone of control, but where are you going to put it? On this road? On this plane? Like, it's not that safe over here with all these tanks. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I thought he was going to do Urban Blight. I think that would one shot, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you get another hit off on that tank. That one's the one shot as well. Oh, you, you, lose, you would lose both of those tanks to the artillery plus rocket, though. But it would keep the rocket in its place. I'm kind of a fan of one shotting the mech and then doing this as well. Keeping the rocket in place another turn. That's what I would do. But instead, he's. he's Going the slow route. He's encouraging the rocket to base lock him because it worked before. So now we're seeing a fighter. So there's finally an answer for the stealth. So the stealth has a timer now. The stealth was getting away with murder before. By murder, I mean doing like 3,000 roughly in damage. Not great. But now we have a fighter. And that fighter is going to pretty sure one shot that stealth. So that stealth better enjoy its life while it lasts. That was a lot of money he put in that stealth. Now the hunter's back. 
and we have a neo tank. The golf balls have entered the arena. How do you deal with a golf ball? Lord Clary now has more income because he, this property over here he owns and this property over here. Green is not going to capture that property anytime soon. He's not going to capture that property anytime soon. So Kindle has the income advantage. What Drake has is the powers. That's all Drake has at this point. He's lower on unit count, lower on income, but he has the powers. He's got the power. Very um, interesting tank placement. Okay, very aggressive. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He didn't use Urban Blight here? Okay, that's just a bad move. That's just a bad move, man. Why would you not use Urban Blight there? Mind you, this is not even a live game. This is before live games existed. You should have used the Urban Blight and done this whole damage over here, and you would have stopped that cap. But now you're equaling it up, allowing Drake back into the game like that? I, I, can't, I can't justify that. I can't justify that. Okay, that's a free hit, because the fighter's all the way over there. Be careful of being trapped, though. Blackwood on top. I can't put anything at the bottom though. We can put something right there, there, there. So it can't quite be trapped, but close to it. But luckily for Green over here, he's, he's gonna win this fight. He's got a big beefy medium tank, stealth, three tanks, versus two artillery and a weakened tank, and a dead, soon to be dead black boat. He's going for the kill over here as well. Green is attacking on every single front. If you watch my replays and my analysis, I usually say do not attack if you're aware at once. But, um,. Is he going to also base lock it, or stop his, keep his rocket there to stop the cap? Probably will, knowing Jitakwin's current attitude. That is a, this, that is a terrible attack right there. A copter attacking a 5 HP. Dude, front shift this up for God's sake. Hell, even if it dies to the fighter, like, at least it's away from the stealth another turn, you know what I mean? But that's just reckless. That's gonna like do like three damage tops, and you're gonna take back. It's probably gonna do two damage as a Drake Copter. Two damage, you're gonna take back four damage or something. Exactly. It's a net loss. And you're still in range of the fighter! For God's sake, at least attack that artillery or something, or bring the. I don't know. Block it with a black boat. You can probably get it over here and it'll survive. Like, really? Really? Bring it up here. Put the black boat there. How is the fighter gonna reach? One, two, three, four, five. See, you put the you put the black boat there, the copter goes there, the fighter can't reach. End of story. Come on, man. Come on, man. Well, they got a lot better since then. So but that's a, that's just a bear that's a baboon bear bone bab bab blabbling move right there. I don't even know what to say. No alliter no alliteration can can justify what that is and now we have an urban blight this is gonna be ugly i think clefairy's gonna feast bunk bunk blunk that's a one oh not quite has to be on the road for one shot i guess oh he's so close to getting base locked and then and the golf ball's in and the golf ball's in luckily for green he's winning over here what's the stuff okay so the fighter's gonna go over there oh my god stupid and then the copters died like a dog. Died like a dog. Died like a dog. Woof. Okay, so this stuff, it's got 24 feet. What do you do with it now? Well, luckily, in the nick of time, Typhoon. Jake talk on the back in it, baby. That's the power of global damage. Bonk, 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 bonk. 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 And there's literally nothing over here. Time the capping is about to begin. J Talkwin has a counterattack. He can cap all these properties. He's probably gonna lose all these, but he's gonna have to counter attack down here. Can he do it? Can he hold on up here though? It's looking really rough up here. He's base locked, basically. Oh, he didn't even attack that artillery? I would attack that artillery. What are you doing? Oh, he's trying to save this tank. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. He wanted to attack the artillery. With the oh, that's a shitty roll. If he kills that, he can attack the artillery and there's no counterattack. And the Neo tank doesn't even reach. Ah, oh, that's an unfortunate roll. That's a really unfortunate roll. That would have been. Don't, don't, don't do this. Why? 
Why are you attack on the city? Oh, he thinks he can get that. Maybe he can actually. Can he get that? Is there an urban blight coming? Probably is. Is there an urban blight? Golf ball. If J Talk can get that. Survive? Anything's possible. And he, I like how he put the infantry here too, because he can block with this this tank. This tank is coming for the pincer strike. This tank has gone all the way from the middle, snuck up the, the back alley. It's gonna attack from behind. Ah uh, yeah, and Urban Blight's coming. Urban Blight's coming. That's gonna be ugly. Ooh. That, that's gotta just be a charge or something, because that doesn't make any sense otherwise. Here comes Fighty. Urban Blight coming in. No comm tower for you. No, 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 no comm tower. Boom, 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 boom. Rocket over here. He's going to take one off the Jitaquin playbook. He really doesn't want to give the cop tower. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Whatevs. That's going to one shot, though. Guaranteed one shot from a city. Okay. I don't know about throwing this into the. Into the death over there. You attack that. You rocket attacks that, I guess. Oh, and your tank got distracted over there. Okay. But now you can just put like a unit right there, probably. And the rocket's so useless. Oh, and the sneaky little snuck that in for a nice little base lock. Base skip. Double base skip to get this rocket, by the way. This game is nutty. Oh my god, I just realized something. Jetaku has unit value or unit count advantage and every. Wow. Despite all the shit I've been talking about Jay Talkwin. Oh, you like that rhyme? Sh shit talking about Jay Talkwin. Uh, he's actually doing pretty decent. And he's going to capture this property pretty easily. Stealth comes in. Is it protected? Uh, okay. So the thing about stealth, you have to reveal it too. So you can put one unit here. And it'll be very hard to reveal it. So I think the stealth is safe. No, no, put it there on the forest. Because then the fighter can go there, but he can't attack. That's a little... Okay. I think it's still safe, though, but... A little concerning. Alright. <laughs> Not long for this world, apparently. Boom. Golf ball alert. Golf ball alert! Okay. Oh. That's a good move. That's a good move. Move of the game right there by Lord Clefairy. That's a good move. That's a good move. A plus. Cheers. Okay. That must be where Lord Clefairy's like, had that brain blast Jimmy Neutron style. That's a great move. Blocked in there. Blocked in here. You have to build an anti-air from all the way over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. What? Two turns from here to build an anti-air. You can build your own fighter. It's not going to survive that fight. You're going to lose that fight. You have to build an anti-air. And when you do build an anti-air, it's going to take two turns to attack. So this is base locked for minimum five turns. Minimum five turns. Put an artillery in front here. That's also base locked. Neo tank can't reach. Put an artillery in front of there. It can't get out. That's a double base lock. Wow, great move. Just like that. Some people might. Oh, I need to kill the stealth and just go. Rolls change, bitch. Rolls change, bitch. Like this. Okay, the stealth. Sure, it's gonna get this rocket free hit. Whatever. But it's a wimpy little Drake stealth. And th this is the double base lock. You can't get out of there. You can't get out of there. You can only produce from one base. That's nuts. Jotakwin theoretically could delete this unit and build Nanterra, but that's like... You're losing 7k right there. That's that's phenomenal. That's a, that's a really good move. Heads up move by Lord Fairy. Smart move. Alright. Trying for the comm tower again. He might get it this time because the rocket... We'll see what the rocket does. Jotakwin does have the income advantage temporarily, though. He's going to lose these two properties. Uh, but he can capture these properties over there. Neo tank had to delete. Builds an anti-air. He's base locked from one property. Well, even if he gets it out, he has to attack twice to kill it. If I'm Lord Fairy, I might consider 
keeping that in there another turn. Let it go down to 3 HP even, like... It's a really good base lock. This is a... Mm, uh, 7 HP attacking the full... I don't like that. He wants charge, I guess? That must, that's the only real reason I can think of that. And that's not even in range, why... I don't like that. It just died. Oh god. Oh god. Put the artillery on top. Oh my god. Even better. Lord Kefari, he must this is like you're watching in progress the evolution of tactics. And another thing, there's no HQ, there's one base. There's there's one lab. There's one lab for each side. One here, one there. He does have a typhoon. Um But no matter how bad it gets over here. Okay, that's dead. He could try for the counter. Okay, there's a counter attack. He needs to move. Oh, man, it's tricky. One of these can. Oh god. Double. Oh, he can block though. This 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 rocket can can release it or this uh, uh, tank can. And there's copters too. That's the difference. Golf ball comes in, and here comes Typhoon, Typhoon, okay is that enough, maybe you can fuel starve it, no, I don't know about that, can you talk and pull it off, two infantry is ready, if I'm Lord Fairy, one attacks this full HP one there, one uses an urban blight, so these are both at minimum six to seven to HP each, buying yourself an extra turn over here, can you do it, six HP, Urban Blight comes in as well. Hits the Neo Tank. Fighter blocks here. He doesn't even. He doesn't even attack. He's not even scared of the HQ cap. That's how confident he is in this HQ cap over here. Combine the units though. Come on, dude. There you go. Ah. Uh... That's a good game. I, I see no way past that. Yep. Good game. Wow. That was something. That was something. Both players made plenty of blunders, but I feel like Lord Clefairy, this might have been the game that he like turned it around. Because he was playing like, you know, mid-level. 1300 sounds about right, but then like... Day, I don't know. Day like... The fighter and the tank wrapping around. It looks so reckless, this tank over here, but it's actually very smart. Day like 20-ish, things just snapped on for him and he just, he put his foot on the gas. Like it was very impressive. I didn't like his early attack over here. He before extended way too far. Capture this property, like after here, raining, run away, run away, get that property. Get that property, pull back temporarily, and push again. But he just kept attacking in this turn. I, I didn't like this. Keep attacking in. I mean, I get... This artillery here, sure, I get it. Because it's already positioned, but... It seemed overextending. You have no answer for the stealth. That's a lot of investment over here. Push with your more resources over here. Because he spent so much on the stealth over here. He's going to have less pro uh, infantry, or, or resources rather, over here. Less resources over here. Where you invest a lot of resources, there's going to be a lack of resources elsewhere. Um, so I would pull back here until you get a fighter, probably. Uh, capture these two properties, or you're going to at least minimum have this. You're going to at least have an income advantage temporarily. Uh, well, until you get this. Um, maybe that property. But you can't just keep attacking in. There's going to be, and the stealth gets away with murder, and it gets free hits, free hits, free hits. That's basically, Jay Talkwin would have straight out lost... If Lord Kefairy didn't do that, though, because that stealth would have achieved nothing whatsoever. And if you spend 25, 24k on a stealth, I don't even know how much it costs. That's how little I ever buy them. If you spend 24k on a stealth and it doesn't do shit, you lose the game. You just lose. 24k? That's three tanks. That's a Neo tank and two infantry. That's a fighter and a recon. Like, whatever you want combination, that's three anti air. Like, come on. So. If he pulled back there, I think it would have straight out won, but then I think he got the memo, and he just pushed where he needed to push. It was his weak side, but being an Advanced Wars player, you have to adjust. 
not the weak side is not always your weak side. You can make it your strong side. The strong side is not always your strong side. You can make it your weak side. You, everything is fluid. Uh, there, there's nuance to everything. If you watched my video before when I was talking about advanced force tips, everything is nuance. Nothing is hard and fast. The weak side is not always the weak side. Very, sometimes it happens like this. I've won on my weak side before. I've over. See, he's overwhelming the base over there. He overwhelmed these two bases. He overwhelmed two bases with one base of input. Granted, that one tank came in, so it helped out a little bit from behind, but that was impressive. I really like this game because it demonstrates, you know, the, um, what's the word? The vulnerability of very strong players when they first started. Everyone thinks these guys are demigods. Oh, they're the smartest person ever. They came from, like, hard places too, you know? Like, they were not always great. I was not always great. These players are not just, they just, just start. I seen a Lagatua lose to like an 800 level player when he first started. You know, these people come from somewhere and they learn from their mistakes. That's what makes them better than everyone else. They learn from their mistakes and they apply what they learned. Other people, it's like, damn, they got lucky. <laughs> I'm smart. They got lucky. That's the only reason I lost. But if you're actually good, you're like, okay, maybe they got lucky in certain instances, but what led to that instance where they got lucky? What, why did I allow a luck roll to be depend the whole game upon it. I should never have allowed a point where a luck roll mattered. Think about that, okay? And then the fighter play. I just love that fighter play. Well done, Lord Kaferi. You can see why he's a 1700 level player now. Uh, he was doing like every five turns he had a genius move back then. Now it's probably like every other turn he has a genius move, so just increase the frequency of it. So anyway, that was a nutty game. I thought Jay Talkman could get this proper- if he hold out another turn, like Another turn over here, cap that, delete your units maybe elsewhere, cap that, kill the rocket, block the stealth maybe? I, I, I think you can win without an Urban Blight. I, I don't think he has enough, well, he might have had enough for another Urban Blight. But it would have been at least competitive, or close, I should say. Anyway, well done by both players, that was a nutty game. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot, hope you guys were entertained, I certainly was. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.